Hello, and welcome to the Modern Dog Trainer podcast, hosted by myself, Ines McNeil, founder of themoderndogtrainer.net, where you'll find articles, downloads, courses, and coaching on the best practices for modern pet businesses. Be sure to add this podcast to your favorite listening list on Spotify or iTunes, and join our free discussion group on Facebook called Business Support by the Modern Dog Trainer. All right. Welcome to the Modern Dog Trainer podcast. My name is Zines McNeil, and I'm thrilled to have our guest on today. Um, she's just such a huge powerhouse um, in her local community and in the industry. So um, today I have Dee Holt of Applause uh, Your Paws in Miami, Florida. Um, but I'm going to let her go ahead and introduce herself because she has such a wonderful background and she can do it a lot better than I can. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so Welcome. much. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Um, I'm clearly a big fan of yours and I've been for a long time. So it's definitely an honor to uh, be here with you today because how far we've come since the oh first gosh. time we've met, right? Which yes. was in like 2012, maybe. Yeah. Maybe was that when we were in Austin? Yeah. We went to the Mexican restaurant. I yeah. I don't even know. Um, it was a long time ago. <laughs> So, um, so anyway, thanks for having me. This is great. And, um, yeah, so my name's Dee. Um, I own applause your paws here in Miami, Florida. I always joke that I could possibly own the largest pet dog training business in the state, but I don't claim anything North of Lake Okeechobee for any Floridians listening. Cause I just don't know what's up there. Like I just mm. don't drive that far north. <laughs> so, so I'm confident that we're the largest pet dog training business in South Florida. Um, but it. if anyone knows if I'm the biggest in Florida, feel free to feel free to tell me. Cause that would be cooler to say, that um, would be awesome. <laughs> but I've had, yeah, I've had my business since 2000 and, uh, I guess I incorporated it in 2009, but I actually started it in 2006, right out of college. Yeah. And, um, we have 18 employees to date, all trainers, and we do everything from, you know, uh, puppy classes to aggression rehab, group classes, private lessons, a day program, a day school, a boarding school. And, um, we have a tremendous amount of community involvement here and a variety of things that I could bore you with all day long, but, um, that's my business in a nutshell. And, uh, we're very lucky to do what we do here in sunny Miami, where the weather yeah. is never problematic for us. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. New York. <laughs> yeah. For those of you that don't know, I'm in Western New York and, um, it's not blue skies here today. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, welcome. I'm thrilled to have you, you here. Um, I know you have a wealth of knowledge, so this isn't even going to begin to touch everything that you could possibly <laughs> share, but I've got some good questions I think lined yeah. up. Um, so my first question for you is, um, probably to be expected. It's what was the hardest part of growing your business from going from solo trainer to multi-trainer company? And what, you know, what did that look like for you? What was the hardest? Sure. Part? Um, that is a great question. And actually, I don't know if I've ever been asked that specific question. Um, so kind of reflecting back cause now, yeah, I've been in the game for a while. Right. And I added my first dog trainer around like 2009, 2010, cause it yeah. was just me those first couple of years. Um, you know, off the books, doing my thing, whatever. Um, and I think the biggest challenge was kind of finding, finding the balance between what I, I guess, fantasized that trainers at my company would do <laughs> versus what they were actually capable of doing or what my expectations of them should be. And, you know, when I look at the role that I had trainers play at the very beginning of my business, I just want to like smack myself because I think I expected way too much and I was asking way too much. And that just slowed me down and made it more difficult to be honest, but hindsight's 2020. So yeah. for any, for anyone listening, you can learn from my mistake, which is be very clear about what you want out of that trainer and what you want them to accomplish for your business, because not everyone is you. And by that, I mean, not everyone has the entrepreneurial mindset or the endurance to run the race that we're running. Right. So, yeah. um, you can't expect a trainer that you hire to wear all the hats that you wear. Like that's just not realistic. And I wish I had realized that because, um, I actually had two trainers that worked for me at the very beginning that then, because, you know, I was probably a shit manager. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I allowed to curse in your podcast? Are you going to beep it yeah. out? <laughs> no, I, I don't care. <laughs> um, anyway, um, 
Oh you my know, they God, work that for... it's PG-13 or- Oh, sure, regular? sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah, PG-13. I won't drop any F-bombs though, I'm gonna try not to. Um, so I had them work for me at the very beginning and we actually ended up parting ways because I just didn't have my stuff together, you know? And, yeah. and I recognize that now, whereas I thought it was them, but really it was me, like being a mm-hmm. crap manager. Um, but that was all learning curve too. So, you know, fast forward seven years, those two trainers actually rejoined my team. And I can remember wow. having this moment where I'm like, I would love for you guys to rejoin me because I realized it wasn't you. It's me. It was yeah. me. And now I've got it together. And I think that this is going to be beautiful. And it is, it, it was, and it is, and it's just awesome because they're great. They were great then. And they're Aww. great now. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And that often, like, that is the hardest part is like managing people, right? Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. What a great tip. Um, what are some important habits that you kind of developed, uh, as you grew your business, uh, that led to that kind of success? Um, sure. So because my background, like as far as formal education, I'm very science heavy. Like I'm a marine, marine science major, like double major in chemistry. So I'm wow. very comfortable with spreadsheets and, you know, statistics and numbers and all that stuff. Um, so that stuff doesn't scare me. And I think, um, I was always, I've always looked at my numbers. I've always been aware of what I'm doing, how I'm doing and how that impacts my bottom line. And I know that can be intimidating for a lot of people, but I really think that as the business owner, even if you're delegating out that job to someone else, you need to understand it. And you need to, you need to want to understand it because at the end of the day, that's your business and that's your money. So, um, I think just always having a pulse on financially, how my business was doing Mm. is really helped steer, always steer the course. Like, um, really proud to say that even in the year of the pandemic, like my business has never been in the red ever, yeah. ever. Awesome. And that that's because I'm watching it. I watch it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's really important to really track the money, look at the money, even if it's scary initially, um, to really take the time and, and kind of own that role as the business yeah. owner. Um, because, you know, if you're just in it to train dogs, I mean, you can do that for free at the shelter. Sure. <laughs> absolutely. Say, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Or as, a, are... or as a solo, as a solopreneur, you could do it that way too. And, yeah. and as you know, make a very comfortable living. You mm-hmm. absolutely can do that. You mm-hmm. can. So. Yeah. Awesome. Um, what is one tip you have for somebody that is managing employees for the first time? Obviously we kind of talked about expectations. Yeah. Do you want to dive into that or anything else? I mean, with the wealth of knowledge that is available on the internet today via online curriculums, Mm -hmm. take some business classes, take some management classes, read, like buy some books off Amazon. Oh my gosh, you can still buy books on Amazon. Yes, you can. (laughs) You can buy books on Amazon. Um, And I've done that for a lot of my managers that now I've hired to manage my team and their first time managers. I'm like, here, read this, you know, because yes, a lot of it is going to be hands-on learning you know, how to manage people, Mm -hmm. but the recipe is there. And so you just need to take the time to teach yourself that skill like anything else. And, um, I guess a little bit more personal tip because I've seen my manager struggle with this. And I think this is every new manager struggle. If you are, um, managing people that you have a friendship with, Mm that's going to be very difficult for you. Yeah. Very difficult. And so I think you just need to be careful and define those roles in your business. If you're managing people, because they're not friendships. And that's not to say that you can't love your employees and the people you manage and that you wouldn't go to the end of the earth for them, because I would do that for my staff, Yeah, but they're not friendships. And I see people make that mistake a lot. And it makes managing really hard when you allow yourself, unfortunately, to develop these deeper, meaningful relationship friendships when really a business relationship isn't like that. Right. Exactly. No, I love that. Um, and I think, yeah, I think a lot of trainers, you know, they bring on their, their team and they, they, yeah, that's like one of the ways they try and make their employees happy or they try like too hard. Right. And then it kind of ends up backfiring a little bit. Um, all right. We're going to kind of switch gears a little bit because sure. uh, we both have kiddos and you <laughs> okay. mentioned you were open to talking about dogs and mom life. So yeah, um, we're going to switch gears. Um, how do you balance it all with a little kid? <laughs> well, seeing as how I cried in the shower for like 20 minutes before getting on this call with you, 
Um, <laughs> mom life. Yes. It's gosh, that's such a hard question, right? Like, yeah. is there really such a thing? Like, is there really such a thing as balancing at all? Because I think you just have to like take every day as it comes. Yeah. And so um, you're not telling me it gets easier. <laughs> Like mechanically, I think it gets easier, right? Like, cause then your kid can be useful around the house and yeah. help you with stuff. Like, I can't remember what it is that Jack did recently that I was like, wow, that's really helpful. And I overlooked the fact that he could do that for me. Oh, he went and got me toilet paper. Like oh, I was in the bathroom and I was at a toilet paper and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm screwed. Like I'm having this moment. And then I go, Jack, and he's all the way in the living room and he comes and I go, can you get mommy some toilet paper from the other bathroom, please? He's like, sure. And he just brings me a roll. And I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> He's useful. I don't have to just take care of him. He can, he can take care of me too. Oh, um, good. but yeah, I mean, I, I think you just have to let yourself feel all the feelings and there's days when you're going to be overwhelmed as a mom. And mm -hmm. I think that's normal. And so if you got to cry it out in the shower for 20 minutes, that's okay. Yeah. Um, but just know you're not failing. You're probably doing fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think there's a real balance. Like you just have to just, just be in the Constant moment, love it, love it every day. Yeah. And juggle yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. roll with it. Cool. <laughs> cool. cool, cool. <laughs> we'll keep going with the flow. Um, all right. So what vision did you have for your business when you first started it? And then how did that evolve over time as you started to grow? That's a great question. Yeah. So I definitely, I definitely always had the vision that I would build a dog training business. And that 100% is a result of my doing my MBA. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, after I finished my undergraduate degree, I didn't want to go into oceanography. I thought I did. And then I'm like, maybe I don't want to do that. Um, and so I switched gears completely. And my boss at the time, cause I was working at my, at my alma mater in alumni relations and I planned events and did all this great stuff with my boss, but, um, she really pushed me to do my MBA and I'm like, gross, like business. I don't want to do that. And she's like, I really think this would just expand your mind. I mean, that's kind of what it was, yeah. right? Like you have this science background, so why not roll some business in there too? And I was like, oh, whatever. And so I, en I ended up doing it. I mean, that's a short story, right? I ended up doing it. And I realized that I had this unique opportunity, at least in Miami at the time, right? Because this, we're talking 2005, 2006 to build a, like a business built on, you know, positive reinforcement, like more family friendly, non-coercive clicker training, because mm -hmm. there wasn't anything like that in Miami. And I just jumped at the opportunity to, to build it. And I always wanted to have a building like that was always part of the plan. Yeah. Um, I always wanted to have multiple trainers and I really wanted a company, a company. I wanted an actual company. Um, and I don't really think that vision has changed, you know, mm. because I had that vision pretty early on. Um, which is a pretty big, you it know, was audacious vision to it start was. out with. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. but, but I think that had, like I said, it had to do with the schooling because yeah. those classes definitely, definitely were preparing me for something like that. If that's what I chose to do, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I kind of knew because of my formal education, what the steps were, I was going to have to take to, to get there. Um, but I definitely think that somewhere around, what was it like 2013, I had just about given up on opening a building mm. because I just didn't, I couldn't save enough money to do it. Like I would get, you know, I'd save maybe like, I don't know, seven, $8,000, uh, when I needed like 50 Yeah. <laughs> and then something would happen. And I just couldn't, like, I couldn't get past 10 grand. It was crazy. Oh. And this went on for like years and years and I was about to give up. Um, so I almost had a vision change, but, um, I managed to get creative. So wow. I did it anyway. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's like forgotten about when you're first starting out as a dog trainer, I think for most people, like there's not like a, a clear vision of where yeah. you're headed or, you know, you're just getting into it because you love dogs and you love training and you want to help people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to really take the time to think about where it could potentially go, um, as sure. your career is really, really important. Um, what impact, uh, do you believe your company has had on your community as a result of all that? I love that question. I've never been asked that one either. <laughs> um, I like to think that we've had a really big positive impact because all the time that I've personally given throughout the years, you know, to our community shelter, to different programs yeah. and initiatives that we've developed and 
the fact that even still, like we donate a tremendous amount of like trainer power, time and knowledge to help our rescue community. I love that. Um, you know, so I, I think the wave has been pretty big and, um, I guess the testament to that is that we're constantly solicited by groups for our help. So clearly that's our reputation, right? That they know we're here to help and we can help. And so they don't hesitate reaching out. Um, and I think the biggest impact that we've had, you know, is in the last, really in the last three years is that we finally got into a good enough financial position. And by we, I guess, I mean, like, I mean me, but I mean, we, yeah. that I'm able to a hundred percent donate all of my time, right. Cause it's all that I pretty much do now, yeah. um, to my prison programs. Yeah. So we actually run five of them here in South Florida and three of them exclusively belong to me. Um, you know, and applause your pause is able to essentially donate the trainer time because wow. these programs would otherwise have to pay a trainer to do what I do. And because of the success of my business and how amazing my team can hold it together, you know, yeah. like without me there, like they run it and they're amazing. Yeah. I can focus all my energy on these programs, which mean a lot to me. So, um, that impact with how we help prepare a lot of these guys that are incarcerated as they, they're about to reenter society. I think that that's probably the biggest impact that mm. I am making, but really I couldn't, I could not do it if my team wasn't behind me doing right. what they're doing. That's the reality. Right. And I think even my team forgets that sometimes, yeah. but that's the truth. Like, yeah. you know, so the, the pause your pause as a business is the reason why D Holt can be engaged in having that nonprofit. Mm. And that's exactly what I say. Like put your own oxygen mask on first. And then, <laughs> yeah. and then you can do whatever you want and then you can donate yeah. time. You can donate money. You can donate resources. You can do things for free. Um, when you, I, set do, up I do dog business. training for free. Yeah. I mean, basically I'm doing dog training for free for <laughs> fun like now, circle. right? That's it. It <laughs> yeah. is full circle. I do it for free. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, you have to set yourself up to be, um, you know, functional, uh, first before you can start, you know, giving away time and, and money yeah. and resources. So I think, you know, that's, I'll just, Exactly. I'll, I'll jump in to give you, I guess, yeah. another little tidbit. So I had a, a client had, had an Akita. His name was Will. Um, I trained as Akita and we bartered because he was a coach, like a business mm, coach. Nice. And one of the things he taught me, this is like a long, well, not a long time ago, but at least, I don't know, it must've been, I'd already been in business for like five or six years, but, um, he said, stop giving away so much because if you give away so much now, you're, you're never going to be able to actually give the way you want to give. And you yeah. just are giving it all away. Like he was helping me review my financial statements. And he's like, why are you offering people all these discounts? Like you are ridiculous. <laughs> and I'm like, because I love people. I want to help. I want to give. And he goes, but you're hurting yourself. And in the long run, you're never going to get where you want to get. Cause you're just giving away the farm lady, yeah. you know, and that had a huge impact. And I remember like I think I was really upset about it when <laughs> yeah. I had to start telling people, cause he was like, you will do this D and I'm like, okay, fine. I'll do it. When, um, I stopped offering discounts. Cause that's yeah. a big difference. Giving mm -hmm. discounts versus just saying, Oh, I like you. Let me offer you one. I am not joking. I mean, I don't even want to put out there a number, but it was sick. Like the amount of money that I didn't give away that first year that I stopped offering discounts yeah. was insane. And now that's like a best practice, right? Like, right don't, I'm not going to offer you a discount. Like yeah. if you ask, then yes, I'll consider it, but I can't, you can't do that. You just can't do that. If you're going to run a cash flow positive business. Well, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> don't give it all away folks. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love it. That's such good advice. Um, uh, all right. So now we're going to wrap up with a few of the questions that I typically ask every guest, at least uh, I have been lately. So sure. um, what is one tip you wish you had known when you were starting out at the very beginning of your business? Oh, um, hmm. that's really hard to answer. There's so <laughs> many. <laughs> yeah, you can do two. Oh can... <laughs> gosh. Um, one tip um, or two tips that there's going to be like, there's going to be times of self-doubt and that's okay. Just hold yeah. the course, mm -hmm. just hold the course. Yep. Like, I think that's the biggest tip. I wasn't prepared. Yeah. If I could tip my old self. Like I wasn't prepared for the 
emotional roller coaster that often accompanies this journey. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. And I'm not sure if that's true across every industry, but I think, you know, when you care so deeply about your business and at the end of the day, we get into this because we love dog training and what it does, right? Mm-hmm. Like none of us get into dog training because we want to make a lot of money. Like some of us do, but that's not why we get into it. Yeah. Um, and I think I just, yeah, I, I, I wasn't prepared for that part the of roller it. Coaster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's okay. Tough. The, yeah. the, the times when you have to go up and down the roller coaster, it gets easier and easier because you've been there and done that. So that's okay. Right. Like that gets better over You're time. Like, so, oh, here we go again. <laughs> right. Like, I feel like I went over a hump yesterday, Yeah. but it doesn't phase me the way that that first 20 times did. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm going to die. Like, no, I'm not. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, the more you do it, the more you recognize your own patterns yeah. and, and yeah, you become just comfortable with being uncomfortable, I guess. <laughs> yeah. That's a great way to put it. You yeah. learn that you are resilient and you will be fine. And that discomfort is temporary. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, and I think, you know, it also like, there's a lot of imposter syndrome in this industry, but really in a lot of industries and it's totally normal. It doesn't mean that you can't help somebody. Um, yeah. so do your best. <laughs> ultimately. <laughs> um, what are some common mistakes that you see, um, kind of in general in the industry that you see other trainers making potentially? Um, I think a lot of trainers spend way too much time uh, like customizing things for yes. their customers. Yes. It's just so time consuming, like yes. written behavioral reports, follow-up emails, uh, these lengthy phone conversations, lengthy intake process. Like it's just too much. Mm-hmm. It's too much. Um, so I think that's the most common thing that I see, you know, and when I'm looking at people that are looking for advice on Facebook groups or whatever it is, like, I just see this a lot yeah. with trainers. And I think I also see the, the, un, I don't want to say unwillingness because I think it's deeper seated than that, but like for lack of better vocabulary, the unwillingness to get help. Mm, yes. Like I'm the, victim, I'm, the, I'm the victim, I'm the victim, I'm the victim. I'm like, no, you're not like save yourself, <laughs> do it. <laughs> It's ironic, right? Because I see, you know, a lot of trainers that, you know, they want help, but they want it for free, but then they turn around and tell, um, you know, dog owners that like, you get what you pay for. So, right. <laughs> right. You Hello. Take your own advice. Here? <laughs> take your own advice. Yeah. 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 Um, no, absolutely. And, and, you know, it is worth it in the end, you're able to have better client experiences and better results mm-hmm. because of that and uh, yeah. just a better life in all different aspects of it. Right. Sure. Um, so no, and then definitely on um, the whole, like writing too many reports or, or taking too much time to like explain things, um, after the lesson, I think that potentially also comes from imposter syndrome because they're potentially overcompensating for, um, you know, I don't know, maybe they feel like more insecure about where they're at and they feel like they need to throw all of this information towards the client sure. in an effort to prove their worth. Right. Yeah. Um, when well, really and I, and I've been there, I yeah, mean, I've been there. I have. know what that feels yeah. like. We all have done it. So <laughs> yep, that, and, yep. and it was a mistake to do that then. And if I had a do over, I wouldn't do it again. So <laughs> Same, same, but yeah. And so, yeah, just know that it is absolutely normal to want to do that and and feel like you need to do that, but, um, you can let yourself, uh, find another way and and make things easier on yourself. Um, all right. My very last question here, probably maybe (laughs) if there was one thing you could change or improve in the industry as a whole, what would that be? Oh gosh. Um, I can someone might find me in the night for saying this, but I, I really, are you ready for this? I'm serious. People are going to come find me in the night. Um, I really want to see industry regulation. Mm, I really want to see that come down the pipeline. And I know that people are terrified of that. Um, but I ask you to look into your heart of why you're terrified of that, Mm -hmm. because I feel like if you're operating ethically with transparency and in your client's best interests, industry regulation is not something that you should fear. And so I really would like to see that happen because with that happening, um, 
I think we will better serve our clients. There will be more protections in place for abuses that happen in the industry. Um, not so much as you know, on the positive reinforcement side of training, but um, I've always been of the philosophy that all dog trainers are in the same boat. I know not every dog trainer feels that way. They think there's maybe three boats, but I am convinced that there's just one. And um, until we have some sort of like best standards of practice for our industry, mm -hmm we're not going to be able to, um, get rid of the outliers that are really hurting the industry. Mm, yeah, no, that's a really, um, great way to put it. And I absolutely agree. I think that's a great next step. And I know I've seen some of the surveys go around and, um, you're definitely not the, the only one thinking that I think the majority of people, um, are on board with that. But yeah, there's like, you know, 101 ways in which that could happen. So, <laughs> right. I know. I was like, I hope it happens a good way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know that's a huge statement. That's why I'm like, people are right. going to come after me. Like, yeah. no, no, it's fine. No, no. <sighs> I think um, you're definitely not the only one with that opinion. So I think that's great. And um, I, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know there's a lot I'm of game. people pushing I'm game. for it. If, yeah. yeah. If, that, if that comes down the pipeline, I'm ready. I've yeah. been ready for years. Like, let's uh, do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Dave, for um, hopping on this podcast. I know it was short, but you know we're both kind of to the point, and um, yeah. I have lots of great information jam packed into this little session. So, thank you so much. And and if somebody wants to learn more about you, you know, where can they go? Sure. Um, so I have two Instagram accounts. I have my one for the business, which is at applause, your paws. And then you're welcome to follow me on my personal Instagram account. If you want to see pictures of my cute kid and my VIP puppies that I raise for high net worth clients, um, or the drink that I'm having at a socially distanced bar, you can see that as well, um, at doggy diva. So that's D O G G I E D E E V A doggy diva. I love it. So mm -hmm. cute. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to the Modern Dog Trader podcast. If you'd like to learn more and participate in our wonderful community online on Facebook, please join our business support by the Modern Dog Trainer Facebook group, where we have loads of free trainings, freebies, downloads, and wonderful conversations. If you'd like to learn more about working with me, the Modern Dog Trainer Academy is currently open for enrollment. In this program, I help great dog trainers build sustainable and profitable six-figure businesses. If this sounds like a program that you might find interesting, head on over to Facebook and send me a private message with the phrase six figure trainer. And let's talk about whether this program would make sense for you. And as always, you can find loads of free resources, articles, blogs, handouts, and eBooks on my website at themoderndogtrainer.net. See you in the next episode.